Hi, this is the big release for the debugger, as we've got not just one, but three major new features to announce. Debugger's root, set execution point, and post-mortem core debugging. So let's take a look at these in action. Here we have a small demo that uses some POSIX calls to get the name of the owner of the running process and print it out. If we run that normally, we'll just see my username printed out. From the terminal, I can run with sudo and see that it recognizes the owner as root. But the detection for our enum seems to be going wrong. How can we debug it? Well, in the run debug config, we now have a new option to run with root privileges. If we check that and start to debug, we'll see that we're being asked to authorize as root. If we do that and start stepping through, will eventually come through to this line here, where it all goes the wrong way. Seems like we're matching against the wrong string. So let's change that and try again. Great, now that seems to work. There's a bit more to say about this elevation feature though. First, if you're using a recent Apple Mac, you may have other options. If you have Touch ID, you can authorize with that. Or if you have an Apple Watch on the same iCloud account, then you'll be given the option to authorize there as well. Even so, it can be tedious to authorize on every run if you're doing it a lot. So we've added a separate elevation service, which you can configure in the settings, in the system settings, process elevation. And this will stay running for 15 minutes or whatever you set down here with the elevated privileges and we'll launch the debugger in that context. That time limit can optionally be extended every time you run, so you'll rarely have to reauthorize in a single debug session. Now, sometimes when you're debugging, you might want to change the control flow a bit to try something out. For example, by taking a different branch in a conditional statement. Now you can set the execution point just by dragging the arrow in the gutter. You can also jump backwards. Or to almost any line of code, although there are some limitations there. Now, while there is a menu option for set execution point, there's no default keyboard shortcut yet but you can assign your own by using find action, finding set execution point, and then assigning your new shortcut. This is a powerful feature, but just be careful of, for example, skipping variable initializations. For a fuller list of known limitations, see the blog post. Now we just saw an uncaught exception due to skipping a variable initialization. In that case, it happened because we changed the execution point at runtime. But these sort of bugs are usually found in the code. So let's change this here as an example. Now things like uncaught exceptions, null pointer dereferences, or out of bounds accesses can, if you're lucky, lead to crashes, which on POSIX systems are due to signals being raised. If so, and you have it enabled, for example, by running this line on macOS, then when the crash occurs, a core dump file will be written out. Or max, this is usually in slash cores. We can now open such core files in C line and debug them. If symbols are stored in a separate file, you can provide that as well. But only GDB is supported for now. External symbol files should come to LLDB later. Now we can see the line that caused the fault, look around at variables, or move up and down the stack. But the process is not running, it's all coming from the core file. So of course, we can't step through the code. But this can be an incredibly useful way to debug hard to reproduce bugs, or crashes that only occur on certain machines. So that's been our blockbuster set of new debugger features in C-Line 2020.3. 
watch the other videos or read the What's New blog post for more details, don't forget you can always download a 30-day free trial to try it for yourself.